This is a brand new day. A brand new day, and God is doing a brand new thing. Will you bow your heads with me? <coughs> Precious Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, bring your word to life and bring it to light. Father, let your people be encouraged and strengthened. Let them be blessed. Lord, in Jesus' precious name, let the joy of the Lord be their strength. Thank you for what you're about to do. In Jesus' name, amen. By the way, if you need to run your car engines to keep yourselves warm or cool, you go right ahead. Amen. Just don't drive away. Other than that, we're all good. Amen. Take your Bibles and turn with me to Isaiah 53. The book of Isaiah says this. Who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, and nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected, a man familiar with sorrows and suffering. Like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely, surely, surely he took our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God and smitten by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement that brought us peace was placed upon him and by his stripes we're healed by his stripes Canada is healed the doctor for British Columbia came on television yesterday and she said the curve has flattened and then she said something equally interesting we don't know why we don't know why the curve has flattened well let me tell you every believing Christian knows why we know why we've been praying somebody say amen all we like sheep have gone astray. Each has turned to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted. Yet he didn't open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. And a sheep before her, as a sheep before her shears is silent. So he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. And who could speak of his descendants? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people, he was stricken. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit found in his mouth. Yet, it was the Lord's will to crush him. And to cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life a guilt offering, he will see his offspring and prolong his days. And the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. Amen. 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 We have a lamb that is above every other lamb. This season for us we call Easter. But prior to the Christian era, it was known as Passover. 
And the story of Passover was that when God saw the blood on the outside of the Jewish homes, the death angel passed over that house. God said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. The blood has been applied to our lives. And the death angel, amen, is passing over. God is doing something in this country. He's healing our land. He's healing our people. He's healing you. He's kept you well. Amen. Bible says in Romans, He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us, how will he not also along with him graciously, graciously give us all things? He who did not spare his own son. Most of you listening to my voice have children. What would it take for you to have your son put to death for the lives of other people? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all of us. How will he not also along with us graciously, or along with him, graciously give us all things. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, Get rid of the old yeast, that you may be a new batch without yeast, as you really are. For Christ, our Passover lamb. Just in case you're wondering how we tie up what the Western Church calls Easter with the Passover celebration. It is not us that made that connection. It was Paul that made that connection. It says, for Christ, our Passover lamb. And let me tell you something. Our Passover lamb is not like everybody else's Passover lamb. Their Passover lambs would be bought year after year after year after year. But I tell you, our lamb only needed to be sacrificed once for all. There was no flaw in him. There was no blemish in him. There was no mark upon him. The lamb that represents you is so spectacular. God said of him, God himself, God the Father spoke from heaven and said, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. You see, when the person in the Old Testament bought their lamb, the priest did not examine the person bringing the lamb. He examined the lamb. The priest never came along and said, listen, tell me what your sins are. Tell me what your failures are. Tell me what your weaknesses are. Tell me what's on your mind. Tell me what's on your conscience. No. The priest examined the lamb. Christ, our Passover lamb has been slain. Amen. God is not looking to point the finger at you. He is looking at your lamb. And he says of your lamb, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. It is the most remarkable story having ever been written. The Bible says in Colossians 2.13, when you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your nature, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave all of our sins. You know, as I said last week, people are well aware of their faults, well aware of their failings, well aware of their weaknesses. You're well aware that there's issues in your life. But the Bible says he didn't just forgive us some. He forgave us 
all. Amen. Having canceled the written code, that's the law. That's the Old Testament law. There are today some Christians that love to bring the church or try to bring the church back under the Old Testament. You know, if we just went to church on Saturday, why, God would be so much more pleased. And if we just, oh my goodness, if we, if we just wouldn't eat certain unclean foods, God would be so much more pleased. God cannot be more pleased. For He is totally pleased with the sacrifice of His Son. Amen. Nothing could make Him happier. Having canceled the written code with its regulations that stood against us or opposed to us, he took it away by nailing it to the cross. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle over them, triumphing over them on the cross. He went to that cross and he took with him the law and the sins that so easily beset us. And he nailed it to the cross so that you can go sin free. You know, man has tried many ways to get rid of his sin. Back in the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 6, when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for her food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and she ate it. And she also gave some to her husband. I think about that. Who was with her and he ate it. And then the eyes of both of them were opened. And they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord called, the Lord God called to man, where are you? And he answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid, so I hid. I was naked, so I hid. And he said, who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree I commanded you not to eat from? Notice what's happening here. It starts out with them breaking the law. The law was you don't eat from that particular tree. And in the breaking of that law, they realized that they were naked and they began to do what they could do to cover up their sin. It says they sowed fig leaves. It was not Eve, by the way. Each one of them were trying to put together some sort of covering. And then finally, they went and they hid. And you know the story as well as I do. God came and swapped the fig leaves for animal skins. Blood had to be sacrificed. An animal had to die for the sins that they had committed. Well, it turns out that you can't wash sin off with fig leaves. That you can't hide sin. In the book of Matthew, while Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him a message. Matthew chapter 27, verse 19. Don't have anything to do with the innocent blood of this man, for I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Asked the governor, Barabbas, they shouted. What shall I do then with Jesus, who is called Messiah? Pilate asked. And they answered, crucify him. Why? What crime has he committed? Asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, crucify him. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but instead an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I'm innocent of this man's blood. He said, it's your responsibility. And all the people answered, let his blood be upon us and on our children. 
Well, let me tell you something. Pilate washing his hands might have got rid of COVID-19. It might have got rid of bacteria. It might have got rid of some virus on his hands. But it did not get rid of sin. Pilate didn't walk away at the end of that day and say, I'm an innocent man. Eve couldn't cover it. Pilate couldn't wash it. It takes the blood. It takes blood to deal with sin. In Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18, it says, Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they're red as crimson. It takes the blood. That's what it takes to cure sin. Man's attempts at curing sin have never worked. There are many church denominations out there today that believe by their good works they're covering up for their sin. They're atoning for their sin. There are many denominations, not only Christian denominations, but denominations of other faiths that believe by their good works they're somehow balancing the scale. You cannot balance the scale. And the reason you cannot balance the scale is it's not your scale. The scale belongs to God. Sin is something that contravenes the known will and character of God. And so our attempts down here at somehow making up for our bad behavior is foolish. I've known many people and frequently what addicts will do is they'll give you as much good behavior as you need to get so that they can get away with their bad behavior. And that is exactly what goes on in church. That is exactly what goes on in the hearts of people. How much good behavior must I give God in order to get away with my bad behavior? Let me tell you something. You can't act good enough. Not on your best day. It's all on Him. Amen. It's His blood, His work, His death, His resurrection. He said it is finished. And nothing we do can add to it. The blood of bulls and goats, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 13. The blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkled on those that are ceremonially unclean. Sanctify them so that they're outwardly clean. How much more? How much more? How much more then will the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself blemish to God, cleanse our consciences from acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God. Amen. 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 Cleanse our consciences. Do you realize that you're not meant to walk around worrying about the sins you've committed? You're meant to walk around being grateful for the Savior who has paid for it all. Amen. 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 We're meant to be a grateful people. Yes. We're meant to be a people that are always remembering what Jesus has done. Amen. He's paid the price. And therefore, we are set free from the bondage of sin. The Bible says in verse 22 in that same passage, in fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood and without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Without the shedding of blood. I'm sorry, Eve, but your leaves won't. I'm sorry, Adam, but your hiding won't cover it. I'm sorry, Pilate, but your washing of your hands won't fix it. The only thing 
that will deal with the sin issue is Jesus Christ and his death. A lamb above all lambs. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us. He went to that cross not because of something he had done wrong, but because of something we've done wrong. God made him, he laid on him. As in the Old Testament, they would lay their hands on the sheep and they would confess their sin over the sheep. So, we have confessed our sin to Jesus. We have laid and God has laid on him our sins. And the judgment that was to fall on us has fallen on him. So that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Amen. I tell you what. There is a hundred sermons in that statement. Think about what that just said. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us. So that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Remember this one. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. How do you seek first his righteousness? Well, it's found in Jesus Christ. In him we have become the righteousness of God. When God looks at you, he doesn't see the failure you see in the mirror. He doesn't see the weakness you see in the mirror. He doesn't see the sin you see in the mirror. When God looks at you, he sees his son. He sees the perfection of Jesus. He sees the magnificence of Christ. He sees the one who paid it all. He sees a debt totally, completely, utterly paid. And you are now considered by him righteous. Well... I must need to hand out a certain number of tracts. No. I, I must need to feed the poor. No. I, I must need to do certain good deeds. No, 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 no. That may be taught in certain faiths. It's not found in the Bible. It is not biblical in nature. What is biblical in nature is this. Jesus Christ has paid it all. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 9, this is how God showed his love for us. He sent his one and only Son, or only begotten Son, into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God. That's an amazing statement. Not that we loved him, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Amen. 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 I tell you, this is the day that we celebrate the death of Christ. This is a joyous day. This is the day that we celebrate and hold as special because in fact, we've set this, side, this day aside to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you that our lamb is above every other lamb. Thank you that he went to the cross. Thank you that he paid the price. Thank you that he has saved us in spite of ourselves. By the way, does it make us better people? Well, in some ways it does. Because when you know and you're forgiven, you want to live up to the very highest standards. But in point of fact, we are still failed human beings. And we are not superior to anybody. But we are forgiven. Amen. Amen. Forgiven. There's always an argument every year over Christmas and Passover. At Christmas time, they say, well, how do you know this is the right time of year? 
we think it was this time, or we think it was that time, or our church celebrates a different Christmas, whatever. I don't really care. I set aside a day, and I honor the birth of Christ. And then we have those that come along and bring the same dumb argument to Passover. Well, how do you know it was a Friday? Shouldn't it be Good Thursday? And we go through this whole spiel of trying to make it all work. I don't think God is in heaven. Ticking off the hours and standing by with a thunderbolt ready to strike us because we might have got a day wrong. I believe God is in heaven delighted and the worship in heaven has just gotten all the louder as we lift up the name of Jesus Amen. any day of the week, any week of the year. And this is a day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Thank you, my wonderful fanatics. Amen. And shame on you whose horns don't work. Amen. Well, we're going to do something now that we have never done. We're going to share the communion long distance. Amen.